In this program, I want to take a closer look at the use of the um, reduction potential in determining the voltage of a particular cell. So here I'm going to start off with a cell, this time composed of, say, an iron electrode in an iron solution. And over here, we'll have a nickel electrode in a nickel solution. So these are identified in the table both here and here. From what we learned in our last program, this second reaction, the nickel one, has a higher potential. So that would suggest that this is going to undergo reduction and this is going to undergo oxidation. That would then suggest that the cell diagram for this would have to indicate that. So the reduction is the cathode and oxidation is the anode. To calculate the energy or the potential of this particular cell, what I have to do is take the potential of my cathode and subtract the potential of my anode. So in this case, negative 0.26 volts minus minus 0.45 volts, giving me the potential of this cell is 0.19 volts. So that's what I would anticipate this device to read. To finish off the movement of electrons, the nickel side is going to be gaining those electrons and the iron side producing those electrons. Let's look at another combination, this time involving a gas reaction. So in this case, I'm going to have a tin in a tin solution. And over here on the other side, I'm going to have some oxygen gas. So I'm looking at this reaction here and down in here a base solution that contains OH ions and I would require a platinum electron. So I have these two participants in this reaction. I can see this one has the higher potential so this is going to undergo reduction and this will undergo oxidation, the reverse reaction. This then is my cathode, this then is my anode. By definition of the energy of the cell, or to predict the energy of the cell, I take the energy of my cathode and I subtract the energy of my anode. So in this case, 0.4 volts minus minus um, 0.14 volts gives me 0.54 volts. So one thing you will notice, the further your participants are from each other in the table, the greater their electric the energy of the particular cell. So when things are close, you'll generate a small voltage, and when they're further apart, a wider voltage. Voltage is by and large determined by the the nature of what's happening at each electrode in the series. Now there's a connection between the energy of the cell and the spontaneity of a reaction. So generally speaking, if the energy of our cell turns out to be a positive value, we will have a spontaneous reaction, as in the examples above. If, however, you get a negative value, then our reaction is not spontaneous, but the reverse reaction would be. Let's take a look at an example. So is this reaction spontaneous? So the first thing I'm going to do is take this reaction and divide it into two half reactions, the copper ions turning into copper plus, and the second reaction, the nickel turning into the nickel ions. So copper, so copper two plus, is going to be gaining two electrons and turning into copper. 
that reaction corresponds to the one that we have written right here, exactly the way that it's written. So the energy of this particular half cell is 0.34 volts. The other reaction, I have nickel producing two electrons and turning into nickel ions. This is the reverse of the reaction as described up here. So as a result, that energy associated with it would be 0.26 volts. Summing those together gives me this reaction. So I can sum together this, and I'm going to get the energy then of this particular cell would be 0.6 volts, a positive value suggesting that this reaction would be spontaneous in the forward direction. Now you can recall from some work with Gibbs free energy, there's a connection with the spontaneity of reaction and Gibbs free energy. And that's what I want to explore here. The connection is that Gibbs free energy can be calculated from the energy of our cell. So E cell is measured in volts, which is the same as a joule per coulomb. N here refers to the moles of electrons transferred. In our case, we have two electrons being transferred. And Faraday is our connection between the moles and the coulombs of charge. It's called Faraday's constant. And this is in your IB data booklet. And it has a value of 96,500 um, coulombs per mole of electrons transferred. So let's take this and use it in our example that we have here. So let's calculate delta G for this reaction that we have right here. So minus the number of electrons being transferred here is two. Faraday's constant, 96,500. And my voltage here, 0 0.60 volts. Multiplying this through, I get a value of negative 115,000, and that would be joules. Now, converting that to kilojoules, negative 1,115 kilojoules, which we notice in this particular case, uh, delta G being negative is our key to a spontaneous reaction. In our next program, we'll take a look at electrolysis. Thanks for watching.